Gillian. Both Bob Denver and the Chocolates. What? I don't know. <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. I don't know. What's what Gillian? G- Gillian Chocolates. I don't know. See, sure that you might find out, and I don't know about that. <laughs> With Jim Jeffrey, you're having Gillian? a stroke. I don't know Gillian. I I don't know. John I was Denver. I was about to say I was about to list off different chocolates, and then I was saying like Gilligan, like Gilligan's Island, and then I said Bob Denver, who played Gilligan. I got lost. Ghirardelli chocolate. Is what you're trying to say? No, I'm talking. You're talking about the fucking the seashells that come in the the the, the marbly type seashell chocolates. Gillians. I don't know what that is. But that sounds good. Yeah, they're very good. They're very good. They got a praline filling. Lovely hazelnut praline. Is it a British thing? Uh, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah, very good. Very good. How's everyone been? We all had a good week. I got some gigs coming up. Are you on these gigs with me, Forrest? No, I was oh. on the ones with you that just happened. Oh, they were good, weren't it? What about amazing? What about all the women that showed up? So many good looking girls. I'm saying this so I can tell tickets to boys. <laughs> Man, if you come to my shows, it's 90% just Instagram models. <laughs> I and they're all why. single and it's want all, to talk. Yeah, it's all like single porn stars that are just broken up and they'll shag anything. Jeez, my shows. Just, just there was too many women for my liking. Yeah, to beat them off with a stick. Yeah, if I could, if I could space it, and no, there's, no one's in couples either. It's just like mm. single people yeah, who are up yeah. for it. Yeah, and um, you know, but I'm married, so I can't take one of them. You can have them all as an audience member. You can have sex with any woman you want <laughs> in Reading, Pennsylvania, coming up. <laughs> And February then, 24th. Yeah, I think we have to say allegedly you yeah. can have sex. Consens- <laughs> consensually. You can consensually have sex with any woman you want who will consensually have sex with you. Anyone you want. All you need is confidence. There's a lot of consensuality. Consensuality. Yeah, you got to ask. Yeah. But you won't have to February ask too 24th. much of these gigs because these girls are well up for it. <laughs> and there you go. So uh, February 24th. And then we got to be Reading, Pennsylvania. Reading, Pennsylvania. At the Santander Performing Arts Center. At, at the at the at the Santana. And then <laughs> the classic uh, Santana. At the, February twenty fifth. February February twenty fifth in Boston, no, Massachusetts. No, 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 no. Washington, Washington D C. At the D A R Constitution Hall. Yeah, that's a big room. There's still tickets available in Washington, and I then I believe Boston the next night. February twenty sixth, Boston. I, I believe that gig by the time this podcast comes out is probably going to be sold out. So if you're listening to it right now, sorry, very close to being sold out. If not sold out, so try to get your tickets for that one. But uh, looking forward to this weekend. It's uh, some big gigs, man. It's, it's at the Bach Center Wang Theater, according to your website. But it also says you'll be in Las Vegas March 11th and 12th at the Bach Center Wang Theater. And I know that's not true, that's so not true. I think that's an error. Yeah, that, that sounds like an error. <laughs> every theater, that, that, every theater that I perform in now is called the Big Wang Theater. <laughs> So if you if you want to see Jim in Las Vegas, 11th and 12th, I'll be with you there. It's, it's the not Mirage. It's at the, the Mirage. Mirage. Not at the Box Center Wing They just theater. got rid of the volcano or something at the Mirage? Oh, I, requested that. I requested that. I'm going to bring the baby. You get scared of volcanoes. Yeah, that's, that's so they got rid of that. You can blame me. The, the link is correct. I just clicked it on jimjeffries.com. Uh, All the links are correct. So you, if you see the city you like, just click on the link and you'll be fine. So, yeah. Um Oh, and I'm going to be, oh, I just, just I just got these dates, actually. I'm going to be at Side Splitters in Tampa. Oh, uh, Bobby Jewell. The original one. He doesn't own it anymore. Uh, he did, though. The spirit of Bobby Jewell will always yeah. be there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, Maybe he still has part. I'm not sure. But um, but uh, April 7th through 9th, I'll be at Side Splitters in Tampa. It's the original room. They have a couple other clubs now. It's the original one. It's a great club. It's really fun to perform there. And to, I reckon you'll sell it out because you would have just been in Tampa with me and and promoted the gig. I, I did promote it in Tampa. Yeah, and people went, all those <laughs> all those girls went crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to see those girls in a more intimate setting <laughs> of a comedy club, they'll all be going down there, Tampa's finest. So, and also hot chicks from New York have flown in. It's true. <laughs> April 7th or 9th at Side Splitters. <laughs> yeah. The hot chick show. <laughs> oh, I hope there's one person listening going, I think he's legit. I think I think he's flying look, in people. Look, I mean, it look, is look, called the okay, moist tour. Yeah, let me just say this, right? Maybe, maybe I'm lying, right? What if I'm not? Yeah. What if there is the smallest chance that my audience is just packed with the best looking birds ever to walk? I'm single. Oh, I yes. can attest to it. Yeah. yeah Forrest was when we were knee in Tampa, deep. I had a ninesome. A ninesome. Wow. Yeah, I never had yeah. that before. Yeah. Dang. Forrest had a ninesome. And then Orlando, I think it was like a twelvesome. Yeah, wow. no, 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 no. Forrest has had 
twelve sims before, but he's never had a nine yeah. sim. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like he's got higher. I've had all the numbers. He's had just that one. And yeah. <laughs> I remember all the women lining up afterwards for the meet and greet, right? So they line up for the meet and greet, and they're going, "You have know, photos?" Like, sure. And I talked to him a bit about the gig, and then they whispered in my ear, "Where's Forrest?" And I said. Pfft. Join the queue. <laughs> <laughs> JJ Whitehead was there too. Yeah. Oh, you got none. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. JJ got zero. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, it was so uh, embarrassing. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, he's arguably better looking than me too. Yeah, but you had to stand in the hallway uh, because all those girls in the dressing room with you, there's no space. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, the fat's back in. All right. That brings us to our ads. Also, hey, 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 people, Patreon, come and join yeah, the fun. We have a fun. gig after, we have a show afterwards. We've been doing a lot of things on there and uh, we wait, do wait, an extra the, podcast. The, the race is coming up soon, our foot race. Mm -hmm. And I believe we're going to visit Bill's Burgers. We're going to visit Bill's Burgers. But if you enjoy the first bit of the podcast and not the meat of the podcast where we talk about subjects, this is the podcast for you. <laughs> Go on to Patreon if you just want us, me to, hit, to tell free. the same stories every five episodes. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Ad free, oh. yep. ad free, and Bonus you can you can buy every week. you can buy these ones ad free. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah! Oh, Christmas comes every month for you <laughs> at the Jim Jeffrey podcast Patreon. Whatever How do they find it, patreon.com slash idkat. Patreon.com to idkat, and then follow us on Instagram as too, as well idkat podcast. And also, if you listen to the podcast, it's. We we know who who listens on Patreon, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. All hot chicks. Yeah, right? that's mm -hmm. true. Thousands of hot chicks. Yeah. Like they send in their photos, and we're like, we don't want them. Stop it. We're trying <laughs> to get. Up. We're, trying, we're too busy. We're trying to diversify. We're trying to diversify. It, it, well, it's different races of hot chicks, but we just need just a couple of ugly blokes. We're short of ugly men. Yeah, on the yeah, Patreon. Yeah, yeah get and in there. So, I don't think there's a single ugly. So man. I'm not saying you're going to meet the girls because you don't meet other people on Patreon. But if you meet a hot chick and you say you're on the Patreon. They will obviously be on the Patreon. You have a conversation yeah, starter. Yeah, yeah, you Bam. listen to the Patreon. Oh, bucks, Patreon. No, just, yeah, 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 yeah. How can you lose that? It's a new year, which means it's time to leave behind the things that don't serve you, like overdraft fees. I am over overdraft fees. Mm -hmm. When you're checking your balance is running low, the last thing you need is an overdraft fee. It's the last thing you need. That, you know, heinous disease or something. <laughs> but the, the fee you don't want. But with Chime, an award-winning app and debit card, you can save your hard-earned paper without paying overdraft fees. Eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on a debt card purchases with cash withdrawals with absolutely no fees. Uh, look, make your first good decision in 2022 and join the over 10 million people using Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and does not affect your credit score. Get Chime at chime.com slash IDK. That's chime.com slash IDK. Kelly. Banking services provided by a debit card issued by the Bank or Bank or Stride Bank. NA members of FDIC. Eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits start at $20 and may be increased up to $200 by Chime. See chime.com slash swapping. Hey, Forrest. Hey. Guess what? What? We got a new sponsor. Who? It's Vin, Vin, It's the Vincero. Vincero collection. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vincero. Yeah. I didn't even know they were a sponsor. My house, yeah. a stunning watch and a great pair of sunglasses, yeah. mate. Just I at love my house. the watch. Yeah. And my, my wife was like, what did you get? And I go, I got you a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> so what you told you? Yeah, Bonus yeah, yeah, yeah. points. If you don't know Vincharo yet, they're a premium lifestyle brand in San Diego carrying watches, sunglasses, and much more. They create exceptionally crafted, ethically made products for today's most ambitious people, modern pieces that elevate your look and stand the test of time. Woo. They are abundant and they are <laughs> adamant. That's the word. <laughs> yeah. They're adamant about the process, design everything in house, source their own materials, produce in small batches, and ship right to you. Ooh. Sustainably. And they do so <laughs> with the planet in mind. Vincero has been carbon neutral since 2019. Which is awesome. Which is like wow. 100 years ago. Yeah. Investing like in it. renewable energy and forestry. Hello. I invent in forestry. <laughs> Vincero has lots of modern and sleek options that would make a great gift for someone you're trying to impress. Ladies, you hear that? Get your man a watch at Vincero. And I look, only hot chicks listen to the podcast, so... <laughs> <laughs> we all get online. Look, shopping online. Yeah. It can be frustrated. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Uh, I'm always pounding my yeah, fist. This yep. used to be so much harder going out to the store. <laughs> uh, will this fit? Uh, that does bother me online. Yeah. Oh, God, you buy something. Because I never send it back. Me neither. Uh, the amount will of wasted fit? money. Will it fit? Yep. But then it's like I get it and then I think it will. And then I give it to Jack. Will it? Will it <laughs> Will it look like this? You never know if it'll look like this. You ever buy anything on like Etsy where someone goes, oh, it's just a bloody idiot oh, making yeah, stuff yeah. themselves. Or it's, it's all- just a picture that they ripped from somewhere else yeah. and it's a completely different product. Will it be broken in a week? Better not be. <sighs> Depends what it is, but yeah. <laughs> Vincero's five-year guarantee and 365-day return fee policy has you covered. Whoa. What's up, Vincero? Vincero makes it easy to find sharp, stylish goods, so don't wait to check them out. <laughs> From quality, you can feel and style you can't deny. You're Vinci- flowing. You're Vincero flowing. Collective <laughs> guarantees to up your game. Vincero is offering a special 15% and free shipping to our listeners with the code IDK. So support the show and check them out at V-I-N-C-E-R-O collective.com forward slash IDK. Yeah. I got a watch. Yeah. It's cool. No, I, the watch looks like there it's were a worth, lot of good like, options. It, yeah. Like if yeah. it looks like it's worth a lot more money than you paid for it, though. Oh, the watch, so. the, the sunglasses, dynamite. Yeah. The altitude watch, is the watch I got. The watch, the watch is the watch is killer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Please welcome our guest, Doctor Janet Davis. And now it's time to play. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. <laughs> All right. G'day, Janet. Thanks for being on the show. Dr. Janet Davis. Uh, well, I don't know that yet. I just told you. I know. Uh, uh, you, yeah. you shouldn't have. Uh, so, so normally I try to pick what a person does by looking in the room that they're in, but you have slyly uh, made your area all blurry. <laughs> either that either that, or you just live in a terribly decorated house where, <laughs> where everything doesn't match up properly or it matches up too perfectly that it's a seamless blur. Um, so you're a doctor, you're a doctor of medicine? Doctor of philosophy. Ah, doctor of philosophy. So do I still have to call you a doctor though? Or, I, <laughs> she, said, <laughs> she said we can call her Janet, but I was introducing her as Dr. Janet. Doctor of philosophy. Yeah. All right, doctor of philosophy. So, okay, so it's about, uh, is, uh, okay, so I, I know that this topic is, there's a documentary on it because, because Kelly let that slip. Um, wow, so, now you've got it. Yeah. You figured it out. Well, there's it, only like five or six topics that there are documentaries. I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to think of a documentary about philosophy. Uh, if a documentary is doesn't air on Netflix, does it exist? It Ooh. is on Netflix. Ah, oh, then it does exist. <laughs> All right, so it has your, nothing to do with philosophy. I know, but I'll tell. I get there. Okay. Philo- everything's got to do with this philosophy. Is the process, everything, everything, Forrest. Everything Forrest. Life got, has got, to, got I, to do with I philosophy. I got chastised on Instagram because I didn't let you. People, people, are questions people like me to ramble. My, my <laughs> wife got upset with you. She was watching other clips and she went, why did Forrest cut you off? And I go, well, that's a big question there, Tase. Um, <laughs> yeah, because uh, the question so was. You're doing it again, Forrest. The question <laughs> anyway, was, so, what, and then you, you went around it. You didn't I know, answer. but that's what's entertaining. No. All right, so uh, is, is it a documentary about crime? Uh, there's some criminal elements in it. Oh, okay. Uh, um, is it a documentary about an entertainer? Uh, yes. Are we about to talk about R. Kelly? <laughs> yes. <No. laughs> Are we? No. How'd you know? Oh, I think you said it so earnestly. No, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, okay, documentary. Is it an entertainer that's still alive? Um, hmm. I should preface this by saying multiple entertainers. Yeah, it's not a specific um, some, one. Uh, yes. Oh, is it? I'll it, give you a hint. Okay. But I don't think you're gonna know this. Um, Luis, right over there. Oh god! His no, no, no. favorite movie uh, is it still your favorite movie? Yes. Yeah, his ah. favorite musical movie is about this topic, and it's a bad movie. It's terrible. It's a stupid, dumb movie, but uh, it's his favorite movie. <laughs> is it Love Actually? <laughs> <laughs> it's a musical. Also, a terrible it's, it's, movie. It's classified as a musical. Uh, okay, it's got songs yeah. in it. It's right. got and it everything. is a musical now. Yeah, it's, it's in a musical. Stage. It's musical on the stage. Now, yeah. I'll give you a hint, and this is still going to throw you off. Hugh Jackman's in it. Oh, Hugh Jackman, uh, the the uh, the greatest showman. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you were going to go the other way with Les Mis, but yeah. Oh, no, Les Mis, I'm bloody, I, I know enough about Les Mis, I could bloody give the fucking, I could be the professor. <laughs> All right, yeah. Actually, I don't know that much. So the subject is? I've, I've never seen it. <laughs> 
I've, 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 I've never seen it. I've never seen it. No, the subject is the circus. We're talking about the oh, circus. Oh, the circus. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's not a documentary about the there's, circus. There's a documentary about the circus. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this much. It's four hours long. I know that my wife would hate this topic because my wife doesn't like animals being used as entertainment. Uh, yeah. so, so she's anti-circus. I have to sneak my son out to the zoo and then be like this, don't tell your stepmother we went to the zoo. Because <laughs> I think zoos, some zoos are good, but that's a different topic. All right, so Dr. Janet Davis is a professor of American Studies and History at the University, uh, University of Texas at Austin. She regularly serves as humanities consultant. What is wrong? I can't speak today. Yeah, so. And most recently for the award-winning documentary miniseries the circus <laughs> fuck uh, that's in my own head the circus it's called the circus i thought that was a documentary about politics uh, there is a, a do, there one. is a documentary yeah. about or a docuseries about yeah. politics which aired nationally on pbs in 2018 is now streaming on netflix worldwide so you can watch it jim she's the author of the gospel of kindness animal welfare and the making of modern america mm -hmm. also the circus age culture and society under the american big top and Circus Queen and Tinkerbell, The Life of Tiny Klein. All of those books are available on Amazon or anywhere else that you can buy books. Uh, Janet, thanks for being here. How did you get into the circus? Like, what, how did you, yeah. how did that happen? Thanks so much, Forrest. Um, well, kind of circuitously, quite honestly, I All was. Right, that's, um, a, that's another. How did, what's circuitously mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, fucking one podcast at a time here, Janet. You can't be you're bloody using big words like secure. Is that about the circus? <laughs> Yeah. So I spent a lot of my childhood in Madison, Wisconsin, which is pretty close to Baraboo, Wisconsin, which is a circus mecca. The Ringling Brothers got their start there. Another circus, the Galmar Brothers got its start there. So field trips from Madison involved going up to Baraboo and watching circus shows and going to the museum, Circus World Museum. So to me, that was just totally normal. I played a lion tamer in a high school play, mm -hmm. Fearless Fanny, the lion tamer. And so circus I, I, is always I, I, kind first, of- First of all, I have to correct you just here very quickly. Uh, Fanny in the rest of the world does not mean bum. It means vagina. I think this is just the name of a person. <laughs> no, no, Fearless Vagina is a hell of a name. stage name. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I used to laugh my ass off when Americans called them fanny packs. That would kill me. <laughs> anyway, Fearless oh, no. Vagina, go from that point on. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So I played Fearless Fanny the Vagina at a high school play. <laughs> and I also then um, later on, I was a flight attendant for some years. And you really learn how to travel fast when you work for an airline. So that gave me a sense of what, you know, the circus life is like to some degree. But anyway, the real moment of kind of decision to study the circus came when I was in a new student in graduate school. And I was in Chicago at the science, the Museum of Science and Industry. And they had all these weird bodily displays. Like, you know, they had pendulums, they had slices of the human body, all this stuff. Mm. But they also had an exhibition of circus photographs from the early 20th century. And at the time I was studying modern India actually and colonial pop culture over in India. And so when looking at all these photographs of small towns across America around 1900 or so on what was called Circus Day, there'd be thousands of people in the streets. There'd be elephants dressed up in how does people from all over the world, animals from all over the world processing in the streets. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this looks so much like what I saw going on in my studies in colonial India. And like, what the hell is going on here? What was going on a hundred or so years ago that, you know, thousands of people would flock into the streets to see this spectacle. And that's what got me started. All right. You know, well, you ask away first. I reckon I got you know what circuitous means still. I no, mean, yeah, no, no. This is a different podcast. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it answered. So. Do you? Yeah, it's like a, like a non-linear path, like a winding kind of way to get there. So when she said that, she's like, a small lime. Yeah. It's a small, okay. small yeah. lime. Um, all right, so we're going to ask Jim what he thinks he knows about circuses. And uh, I got some a series of questions. After he's done answering those, Janet, you're going to grade him 0 through 10. 10 the best on his accuracy. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. We'll add all the scores together. If you score 21 through 30, Jim, three ring. Mm. 
11 through 22 ring, 0 through 10 ring. Mm-hmm. Okay. A lot of effort in the yeah, yeah. categories not, I today. had flea there, but... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, which civilization is credited with creating the first circuses? First of all, I thought you were going to ask me what a circus is, but I'll, I'll answer your question. Uh, you don't know what a circus is? <laughs> it's a variety show. <laughs> okay. All right, let anyway, me ask that I'm just question. assuming you know what a circus is. Yeah, I don't know, but like... Like, but it, there's, there's many uh, things under the umbrella of circus. Like Cirque du Soleil is still a circus. You mean next a tent? to a, next to a big top circus. <laughs> yeah, a tent was right there. Yeah, yeah umbrella. Yeah, but it's terrible. Oh, God. <laughs> so what? What was your question? What was your question? What civilization is credited with creating the first circus? Ah, uh, this is a tricky one. The creating the first circuses, it would have to be somewhere. See, the Greeks claim to have invented everything. The Greeks invented everything and then just left it all to perish. They've never finished anything. I've been over there. <laughs> yeah. um, Run down. Uh, but I'll, I'll say the Greeks. They Greeks. would have done it right after the Olympics. And then when was <laughs> the, 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 the venues, right? They yeah, yeah, yeah. They go, well, stop chairs. running people here. We'll put some lines. When, <laughs> when was a modern circus created and who created it? Uh, okay. I want to say P.T. Barnum. But I don't know if he was just the best bloke at sort of uh, a self publicity type of guy. I've yep. seen some movies about him. But uh, so let's say P.T. Barnum. Uh, and I want to say the modern circus was created, I'll, I'll call it an American invention. Because you might like, have. I like, know when, I'm saying when. Oh, 1850s. Okay. And then who was credited with building the first permanent circus building and also inventing the circus ring in 1769? 1760. Okay, so I want to, I want to, I want to go forward to 1680 for the last answer. Yeah, yeah, 1680, okay, 1680 for that 1680, one. All right, and uh, and then I'll say P.T. Barnum did the circle, but did he also do the other one? No, he didn't do the other one. <laughs> uh, the, the other one was invented by uh, 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 Chris Soleil. Chris Soleil, okay. Chris Soleil of the Cirque family. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What In it, fact, I might say that the circus was invented in France. That sounds like a thing they'd do with all their fucking so mimes no more and Greece, stuff. France. And also, also they're, they're pretty shitty to animals as well, the French, with their fragois and all that type of stuff. I imagine the first show was a French man kicking a pig around a room. <laughs> <laughs> what is a menagerie? Was, <laughs> menagerie. <laughs> menagerie is uh, yeah. where you keep uh, birds? I don't know. Yeah, it's where, where you keep birds in cages and shit, man, I think. Okay. What was the main attraction when the circus first took place in America? Oh, uh, when, it, when it first took place in America, the main attraction would have been uh, freaks. They would have had a couple of, uh, you know, I don't know if freak shows count as the circus, but they feel like they're very closely connected. It would have been a couple of Siamese twins connected at the skull. Okay, so kicking the pig first, then freaks. Yeah. Okay. What is a tent show and how did that change things? Uh, ten shows when you wake up with a stiffy. <laughs> you show your wife? Yeah, yeah. Hey, and, babe. And you guys ten told you it works. It's your fault. Um, so, uh, yeah, ten show. A ten show is when you have a circus in a tent. It's a traveling show where they, they put the tent up and a guy in a top hat, the, the ringmaster, mm. who's in a ring, and he'll get up and go, hello, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see death-defying feet. And then someone will come out with a dog riding on the back of an elephant and we'll go, oh, I never thought I'd see that. Yeah. <laughs> And then, then you'll so see, and then there'll be a line tamer. They've always got a stool or a chair. That's their biggest weapon. The theory behind that is that the lion thinks that the chair legs are actual legs of another animal. Oh, I don't believe the the lion's that dumb, to be honest with you. But they, is they, that I mean, really what they say? That's what they reckon. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why they use the chair because it feels like another animal's coming at them, like huh. with, with with things. Did I know that? How, how did the circus travel from town to town? It does. Yeah, it does. It travel. That's well, how, why. How did it? Ah, oh, the trains, if you watch like Indiana Jones, they'll have it back in the old day before the, the car was a modernized thing and then you could have trucks and stuff like that. By today's standards, you do it in trucks. But back then they would done it by steam train okay. and they had the circus train that goes by and there's always a fucking giraffe with its head sticking out the top. <laughs> and then you <laughs> then you go to the circus, there's never a fucking giraffe, but they're always on the train. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they just support the circus, but they're never performers. Just fans. They can't <laughs> fit in the big top. Fucking useless animal for circus Too activity. Too many tunnels through mountains with the giraffe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they, they get, they get lost say, in it. Yeah, be bad in tunnels. Yeah, yeah they get yeah. lost in an underpass, the old giraffe. So, so you mentioned P.T. Barnum. Like, who is he? He was he was one of the great self promoters. He was really good at PR and rapping. And he would you know he was a guy who gave posters and put mystifying things that you're never going to see. And he was a hype man. Hype man. 
How did religion affect the circus? He was played by Michael Crawford in the musical P.T. Barnum. That's all I know. Yeah. And, uh, well, who, did, who did Hugh Jackman play? P.T. Barnum? Yeah, but the original, the original West End musical was yeah. Michael Crawford who played the is. Phantom and then but he was he was some mothers do have him. He went, Ooh, Betty. And if you haven't seen the show, you don't know what I'm saying. But no. he was a t- very talented man. He was also a condor man. Anyway, <laughs> if we ever do a podcast on him, I'm all over it. Um, <laughs> How did religion affect circuses? Oh, uh, they would have stopped some of the fun things because they eh, pagans always invent something. There would have been pagans. And then the Christians would have come in and gone, stop slaughtering the lambs or something on stage. There would have been some Christian uproar and calling it paganism, and then that would have changed everything. And also they would have said that some of the magic that you would have seen would have been witchcraft, and they would have got upset by that. Uh, How were women treated in the circus? Uh, Too well, if you ask me. Uh, (laughs) Maybe. No, I don't know. Um, I I reckon... I reckon... You think they were like... What do you mean? They they were all treated the same? Well, I mean... It wasn't circus to circus? It's like they had like a mandate that we we put them all in boxes? Like, maybe there was... Well, were were they treated poorly? Were they like worse than the men? Equal? Whenever you ask that question, the answer is poorly. There's there's never there's never a piece of history, and the women were treated better than the men. And, and let's get on to the black people; they were treated like kings. No, that's not how it works. Of course, if it's an historical question, the women weren't treated well. So I reckon. Okay, what happened was there was a woman. She worked front desk. She sold tickets and all that type of stuff. They kept on shoving her in a box to travel around from town mm. to town, and then that's how they invented the contortionist. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um. On. The 12th of November, 1859, what was Jules Leotard the first to do? Forrest, at, I know you're very old, but we don't call him that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the first to do at Cirque Napoleon in Paris. Uh, wait, wait, that's his name again? That Leotard? Jules Leotard Jules in 1859. Le- he was the first person to do this at Cirque I will say, Paris. I will say, because with the it, to this day, the French are all like really still into type, um, type rope walking. I'll say he's a type rope walker okay. or, or trapeze. Um, I'm not gonna do that one. This one. Okay. What happened at the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus at Hartford, Connecticut, on July 6, 1944? They had a fight like the Sharks and the Jets, but it was you know dancing, and yeah, singing. dancing fight, Barnum all holding, fight, all holding lion chairs at each other. <laughs> no, nah, there was probably a fire. They all died. Okay. What type of elephant does Ringling Brothers Circus use the most of? Indian or African? <sighs> I, I I know about the difference between the two elephants. Um, I'm trying to think what. Um, yeah, we did a whole episode on yeah, elephants. Yeah, I'm going to say they use African elephants. Okay, and then. Oh, they probably use the smaller ones for travel. I'm going to go Indian. Okay, Jumbo. Famous elephant, right? Yeah. He's an elephant, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah his, name, <laughs> his name's fucking Jumbo. Jumbo. <laughs> Jumbo was only 40 inches tall at the shoulders when he was discovered in French Sudan, Africa in 1861. So you want to change your last answer? <laughs> so why was he African, named? African, African elephants. <laughs> why was he named Jumbo? Well, he's fucking massive, wasn't he? He was, he was only he, he forty was inches tall. It's only forty inches they... tall. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it's like same thing as when you call a fat person tiny. Nickname. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, uh, well, I think that's a real answer, Kelly. What are you yeah, laughing for? Just, fr- I don't know if I can say this word. What is a fun, fun ambulance? Fun ambulance. A fun ambulance. Fun ambulance. <laughs> So when you overdose on drugs, but then you feel good before you get to the hospital. A fun ambulance. <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> you sweat it out and you go, I don't need the hospital anymore. Take me back to the party. Well, I should have put this question fun up ambulance. there. This question was out of order. Sorry. What beverage was Jumbo sometimes allowed to drink one to two gallons of for health concerns? Uh, like, I guess they, they were worried about him. So he only Baja really- Blast. <laughs> no, you know, for ga- gallons, what, what, what beverage? Gallons? Yeah, he uh, was allowed to drink it one or two gallons. Why, they only let him drink, right, because of yeah. health concerns. They didn't let him drink more of this. Oh, so it's not like milk or water uh, or Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, okay. Oh, no, wait a minute. Dogs don't drink Coca-Cola. That's well, a, no, but Jumbo's an elephant. an elephant. Yeah, I know, but, like, dogs fucking eat everything. I assume that no animal likes Coca-Cola except for us. <laughs> uh, for health, I'm, I'm going to say orange juice. Okay. Nah, Coca-Cola, fuck yeah, it. I, I'm, I'm moving that one there. There, there, there. there. When was Ringling Brothers Circus created, and how many of the brothers were included in this creation? Ringling three ring three brothers. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They were created in the 1920s. Everything. All I know is, during the Depression, 
there was some people who did entertainment, vaudeville and all that type of bullshit around then. And I reckon that would have been when. There you go. Okay. A couple more questions and we'll get to Jan here. Why was the circus originally considered adult entertainment and how did they change to appeal to be appropriate for children? Because Jumbo used to fuck. <laughs> Um, it was adult. I assume there was probably some burlesque elements to it back in the day. Mm. Maybe like if you see like the Moulin Rouge, it's not really stripping. It's women on like uh, merry-go-round uh, horses, topless with big headsets and stuff. And I imagine that probably if, if the if circus originated in France, that probably was a bit of a carry over there, like mm. Moulin Rougey type things. And then people were like, you know what, you know what would be good is if we could sell this show to the whole family because adults are bored out of their mind. <laughs> so they, they went, uh, what we'll do is bring in a monkey, slap a fucking hat on it, and put it on, a, on an elephant. You got yourself a show. Okay. When did clown college start? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> what, for me? Um, <laughs> no, no clown college. I didn't know there was a clown college. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, the University of Phoenix. <laughs> no, um, okay, so Clown College would have started in the 1950s and it would have been people who came back from the war and they were super happy and so they decided to, you know, go to Clown College. I think there's like, isn't one of Florida, isn't there? Uh, being, sure one being a clown is a weird fucking personal endeavour. Like, fuck John Wayne Gacy and all that type of stuff. Like, he was yeah. bad for other reasons. <laughs> But, like, we had a clown that used to come to my birthdays and when I was a like little. invited? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> he just, just, up. He's yeah. a neighbor who's a clown. He just loved parties. No, no, it was me 35th. And, uh, no, oh, no, yeah, no, I remember that one. no, there was this clown that used to come to my birthdays. He was called Coco the Clown. And he used to come along and he, I, I hope Coco had kids or a family or something like that because if he was just a single bloke carrying on the way he was, he was no good. But do, you, do you remember when we, we did that uh, uh, that comedy festival in like Grand Rapids and the guy that was our driver was a part-time fire safety clown? Do you remember that guy? What? And his name was Flamo. <laughs> <laughs> I have his card so we're still. I thought he was a fire safety fire clown. Fire safety it's, clown. It's like, do you ha is, is yeah. it one of the things, is there like a, a Jedi council for clowns where they all sit there and they, they go, they, they all have a panel and they decide whether someone's a clown and they the go, clownsel. is this person a clown? Honk, honk. Clownsel. Like, mm -hmm. Good, Jack. Jack's yeah, killing but, it today. But I feel like anyone can be a clown. I, 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 like, I like a clown that goes all the way. You got to have the big shoes. You gotta have the wig, you gotta mm -hmm. have the nose, mm -hmm. you gotta have a flower that sprays water. Wait, it, what clowns aren't going all the way? Oh, you'll see some that are just putting on a hat and they're yeah, just like ass clowns. Yeah, those the fucking guy. those hobo outfits. <laughs> and there's just a little bit of makeup. You know, they're no good. Put the effort in your clown. <laughs> all right, here, let's uh let's do three more questions and we'll get all right. Who is responsible for the greatest show on earth tagline? Uh PT Barnum. What toy company bought the circus in nineteen seventy one? 1971 bought the circus. Oh. I would say Mattel. Um, ba, 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 ba. And then what, what did Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey eliminate from their shows starting in 2016? Ringling Worm. <laughs> mm. No, what was the year? I'll, I'll answer it properly. 2016, they eliminated this from their show. Oh, uh, bestiality. It was turning the kids off. Oh, that was serious. Okay. How does <laughs> Come tickets? and watch this chip get fucked. <laughs> More they, fucked than anyone has ever been fucked they, since they, the dawn of time. They eliminated it from the show. They just wheeled out. He's not a baboon. His ass is just raw. Um, <laughs> eliminated it. They eliminated it. 2016. Uh, they eliminated in 2016. Yeah. Um, the bit where they the, the song, Aren't the Germans Fun People? <laughs> <laughs> the anthem of the circus. Yeah, because the, that at because all, the first world war had just ended and they were like, they're not fun people. <laughs> we're going to go out on a limb and say that song's not uh, appropriate anymore. We've done our own research. Aren't the Germans fun? Aren't the Germans fun? You went along like that. Follow-up question, how did, did this affect ticket sales? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because there was a lot of German support. <laughs> Okay, Janet, how you doing? Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, Janet, Janet, I'm not disappointed that I don't know any of these facts. I'm disappointed that you know them, really. Like, <laughs> like, like, you spent a lot of time on this, Janet. Bloody hell. Uh, how did Jim do? Zero through ten. Ten's the best on his knowledge of the circus. Well, I'm going to need to count. Um, I'm going to say he, estimating from my notes here, about a 50%. All oh, right. A five, wow. a five. I'm surprised yeah. by that. Yeah, yeah. Very surprised. Yeah. Five. Okay. Yeah. Kelly, how do you do yeah. in confidence? Uh, negative three. Wow. <laughs> I thought like I, might be his worst I confidence. Thought, yeah. I thought I was very confident. Yeah. That, 
Well, mm. Mm, I don't know. Mm. You wait, so you wait. Do you, you know the German answer already? Uh, yeah. When she pulls out the German song. I know. Well, yeah, I learned it on the recorder last night. Yeah. So I'm Anyone at home, it. Google it now before it happens. I'm right. <laughs> All right, so that, we're up to two. I'm going to give you zero and et cetera. That means you're a flea. I changed it to flea. Oh, yeah. flea. Flea circuses, they were bullshit, weren't they? Flea circuses. All you yeah. do is you have like a little swing. And then you have a little bit of wire and you go, there, there, on the swing. Wait, yeah. a flea circus? That's a real thing? Yeah, you go, it's like, it's like, it's a little tiny, like it's this big. And people go, oh, look, I've got a flea circus. And then you have like little bits of dental floss where you pull like the swing and you make the seesaw go up and down by itself. Um, and you act like there's fleas in there. You go, look, at what's going on? Look at the fleas. Look what they're up to. So, Janet, we're going to go back through these questions here now with Jim. Uh, the first question was, which civilization is credited with creating the first circuses? Jim said yes. Greeks, then changed it to France, and he said they kicked the the guy kicked the pig around. How do you do? Yeah, well, he was closer on his first answer with the Greeks. It's it's the Romans, um, uh. and, and it's not even really the actual circus entertainment. It's the circular ring and the structure that held the entertainment. So the circus maximus. So you're talking like, like gladiators were counted as the circus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they that's called a, it a circus. Circus they Maximus. It, yeah, circus I know, Maximus. but it's not a circus. No, you're right. You're it's right. like it's calling not. boxing the squarest. You right. know what I mean? Because it's in a square, yeah. even no though they call it a ring. Nah. Which, that's always confusing. Yeah. <laughs> that is a yeah. really good point, actually. <laughs> it, Jack's like, it is. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to lose Jack yeah. for a few days. <laughs> He's got to go off into the woods and really think about things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's really a reference to the structure. It's actually not even called a circus for its content, really until the late 1700s. So a lot of time passes. But a building so, that has a circular ring in it. So what was what was the first year again? What was the first year? So, well, ancient Rome. I mean, so you know, back in ancient Rome, um, I don't know the. Yeah, we didn't ask the year. Data. So the next yeah. one was when was a modern circus created? And Jim said, although the, the Roman one would have had lines. 1680s, yeah. <laughs> 1680s, your score's set in stone. You can't change it. Yeah, uh, still, Jim yeah. said 1680s. Still contribute to the conversation. He said, nope, Chris, Chris, Chris Soleil. <laughs> he said, Chris Soleil invented the modern circus in 1680s in America. How'd he do there? Uh, that one he really did badly on. Mm -hmm. um, you either yeah, know it or you <laughs> don't. It's, it's, not, it's not one you can just sort of oh, guess the name. Right. It's like yeah. my chances yeah. of getting it right with not knowing it were pretty slim. <laughs> Yeah, it's it is pretty specialized. Yeah, so this is the first um the modern circus was created in 1768. Mm. So this is a it was created in England. Um an English cavalry officer, veteran um named Philip Astley. He was a veteran of the Seven Years War and he came back from war and decided to open a riding school. So he taught trick riding. And then in the afternoons, he'd have, and it was an open air in a ring. And um, he would have these other kinds of entertainment. So when you were talking about, well, what is a circus? You were onto something with the, the variety show element of it, because yeah. it's a multi-act entertainment that occurs in a ring. And it's encircled by an audience. And so that is what Philip Astley does in 1768. And then the next year, he actually moves his operation into a building. And the thing that's, I think, really important here is that he figured out that a person who is dancing on top of a horse that's cantering, that that diameter of that ring has to be about 42 feet for all of that to occur. So the physics of the horse is how the circus originally, the modern surface, circus, was created so you're saying the stage would have been a lot smaller if they were dancing on the back of dogs there you go oh, yeah. if dogs had been the animal <laughs> so the, pi right. the pig kicking routine was in a small space was it <laughs> that's right that's right that would be of an entirely different kind of dimension next yeah. time next time when i perform in the round and i do it every now and again um am i allowed to say welcome to the circus and would i be accurate in saying that Say that you'd be extremely old school. That's what that's how that's how I roll, Janet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could be like you could be ancient Roman old school with that. All right. Yeah. yeah so the rings the, the key. Circus. I never the really circus tour. Yeah, yeah. 
I never, th- yeah. I never thought about the ring being the key. So that's why the Rome and then modern got it. Okay. So, yeah. and then you said for, I asked him first permanent circus building in 1769 at, uh, he said PT Barnum. So again, you, you just answered it, right? Astley. Yeah. Rick Ashley. Oh, Ashley. Rick Ashley. Yeah. yeah, Rick, Rick Ashley. Ashley. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> right. Never going to give um, you up. Rick rolled. Rick roll. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what this, I, I think I, I should have organized the questions better. What is a menagerie is menagerie menagerie. What do I, what I keep menagerie doing? is where you keep animals, right? Keep birds in cages. It is. Yes, it is. So I gave you a no on that one because um, you said birds and okay, actually I changed my vote because why not? Birds could be in a menagerie. Oh, I was I was referring to women. Just my pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so you got that one right. Uh, um, well, you keep birds, women, man. With, as in AVs. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's a group of animals or even a single, usually a group of animals that is, and they, they're kept together, displayed, and then um, they travel around. And people is, move them around. Is the animal zoo thing coming to an end? Is it almost over? Because it feels like it sh- sort of should be. Or, or like whether like, like my wife's super animal rights type of yeah. a person, but I, I believe society has shifted a lot that we don't want to see animals in small cages traveling from town to town, away from other animals that are similar to themselves. Um, or does it still exist? Is it going strong? I would say that. Zoos have recognized that really strong sentiment culturally. Mm. And what they've tried to do is to kind of, and I shouldn't say that all zoos have done this because they certainly have not. Not the whipping brothers. (laughs) (laughs) They're good blokes. Yeah. But a lot of zoos are trying to create more like larger spaces for animals and spaces where you're not necessarily going to be seeing them in close proximity all the time. Like they have places to hide and to retreat if they need to. Um, But, and they also, and this may be something borrowed from someone like P.T. Barnum a little bit, but promotionally they market themselves as being like, we care about conservation. So we're actually on the cusp, you know, cutting edge of species preservation by what we're doing. Now, a lot of people would totally disagree with that. You know, a lot of people would say, look, you know, this is just captivity basically. Uh, do you know about the Moscow Circus? It used to tour Australia a lot. Um, so I know that there is, um, so there's a little Moscow Circus and then there is like the big state circus of Russia. Oh, no, there's, so, a, there's a touring circus. Called, this is just my fans. I'm doing this one. Uh, in Australia? Uh, no, no, no. You'll know in a second. And there, do, do you know of an elephant called Gunter? I have Gunter. Yes, you have heard of Gunter. Gunter was around in the late 80s, early 90s, and the circus master used to get in front of Gunter and go, up, Gunter, up, and the elephant used to rise to his legs. Can you confirm that that's a real elephant? All right. Wow. I'm just I, I don't know. No, I you've heard confirm. of Gunter. You've heard of Gunter. It was, it was the nickname. Jim, Jim has a bit that yeah. he used to do. There you go. You can yeah, do it. Yeah. It. We went and saw the Moscow Circus when I was a kid, and there was an elephant called Gunter, and it was the big star of the show. I think Gunter was even on the poster. Like, you get to see Gunter, and Gunter could do tricks. And we go, up, Gunter, up. My mother was, uh, she was a large ish type of woman. <laughs> and uh, me and my brothers used to call her Gunter from that moment on. And so that was our nickname for her. And so it's a running joke through my whole thing. I still refer to her as Gunter now, and she's passed away for three years. But. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, just wanted to confirm that I wasn't bullshitting to the audience. There well, was an elephant called Gunda. No, you were correctly bullying your mother. Yes, yes, we were probably there. <laughs> <Right. laughs> okay. Uh, what was the main attraction when the circus first took place in America? Jim said freaks, Siamese twins, connected at the skull. It's connected at the skull. Herman and Sherman. <laughs> and the real freaky thing was they were women and they had boys' names. Confused everyone. Back in the day, you couldn't do that. <laughs> At this point in the quiz, I was really pessimistic because things weren't going all that well. Oh, but this is um, when you when you yeah. bring up freaks, Janet. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> all right. Well, there's going to be a lot of time to talk about freaks. Yeah, yeah. They're they are a big part of the circus, but at this point, they really weren't part of the show. Not in the way that they become later on. And the thing is, is that. At the very beginning of the circus in America, um, the very first circus performance happens in Philadelphia, 
early April, 1793. Watch me break this bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. And this guy named John Bill Ricketts, he was a great equestrian. He did trick riding and he learned his art from the rival of Philip Astley. And so he comes over to, you know, to get, try his luck in America opens a little riding school in Philadelphia, and then in April of 1793, opens his first show. So my long answer is, it was all about that trick horsemanship. They also had clowns. They also had wire or rope walking and acrobatics. So oh, those were the elements of the circus. So the, whole, the, the guy on the back of the horse, that was the main attraction? Yeah, oh, back wow. in that day, it I was. I have a feeling if television was invented, the circus would have never happened. Like yeah. people came out to watch a guy on the back of a horse jumping around going, what else is in town? I can't well, sell I can't sell tickets in fucking Orlando this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get a horse. <laughs> Gotta get a horse, yeah. And so what Ricketts did is that he would he there was a small boy who was part of the show, and mm. he would he would perch, he would stand actually on top of Ricketts' shoulders, and they would do what they called a flying mercury act. And they'd go zooming around the ring with this boy perching on top. And then Ricketts would do things like throw an orange up in the air and then whip out his sword and catch it. So, you know, there was a lot of cool stuff. Until that little boy fun. fell over and the jumbo trampled over him. And that's when the <laughs> yeah. freaks were brought in. Well, Just by design. Because... They didn't want to get him fired. Look at Flathead the boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's, he's got Ricketts. He's with Ricketts. Yeah, that's not a last name you hear anymore, Ricketts. Just went away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like my friend John Gout. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Richard Leukemia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Dick Leukemia. Yeah, Dick Leukemia. Yeah. Okay, what Dick is a tent Luke. show? Jim said when you wake up with a stiffy and uh, when you have a circus and a tent traveling show. That was your actual you answer. You ever used the word stiffy, Janet? And Just then, in case you don't know what my answer was. Um, okay. Use that word before. People yeah, don't use stiffy. it much in America. It feels very Australian using the word stiffy. It's a throwback. Yeah. It's like I tell you, this throwback sort of swear words. I've call someone a shithead. It really throws them. No one calls anyone a shithead anymore. I've brought it back. What do you call them shitties? <laughs> oh, shut up, you shithead. See, look, it's good. <laughs> oh, did it hurt? Yeah. Stings. <laughs> so what? What's, we use it at my house. <laughs> so a tent show. That, yeah, I, Jim so, said dog riding in the back of an elephant. No, it's when a, hot, when a hot girl walks by, you go, oh, she's a tent show. That's what she does to you. A tent uh, show. <laughs> God, it's a good answer too. <laughs> well, once you decided not, you know that. Where did I get my cities? five points? <laughs> there's, only, there's only about three questions actually, left, and I'm not even close on any of these. So I'll tell you what: you actually got credit for this one because I got, I got, ooh, ooh, the stiffy, the stiffy. Because answer. there were plenty of stiffies inside the tent, first and foremost, mm. and secondly, mm. this is a traveling show. This is what tent travel comes of age in America. In 1825, a young showman from New York named Joshua Purdy Brown, he was wanting to show in Wilmington, Delaware, but the religious leaders in the community, they said, absolutely not. You're forbidden from entering the city. So he decided to set up a tent at a tavern just outside the city limits at the Cross Keys Tavern. So this is in November, November 22nd, 1825. It would have been cold. It would have been cold. It was cold, but guess what? People came to the show. They loved it, and a new tradition was born. And as you said, this is a traveling form of entertainment. And so I give you credit for that because that's exactly what happened. I once went to a strip club in a tent. I was at a music festival. It was, it was a bikers convention. I was performing, and they had a <laughs> – yeah. so, Wait, and this what, is where in, is this? this is, it was actually an amputee bikers convention. <laughs> like, like, it I, was in legit. Yeah, yeah, well, they, cut, they, cut, they cut it out. That no, 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 they kept it. You because no, I had the line that got cut out. Yeah, yeah, there's the strip club. Tent. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I said you you asked me at the strip club and and I go oh, the lighting was bad and the chairs and you go so it was bad. I goes no, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Line. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, what it was was it was an amputee bikers convention y type of thing out there with a few bands. and so I went on stage. It was the only I, the only time I stopped talking and just walked off stage. I started stuttering because my opening joke was I walk out there all in wheelchairs and stuff. I go, hey motorcycles, hey, they cost an arm and a leg. And oh God. <laughs> oh, I, I never said anything more dumb in my life. And a can gets thrown I went, and then I just walked off the stage. Anyway, they had a strip club tent 
and it was a hot day, but it's still England, so it probably rained the, the day before or something. And so you go into like it's just you know it's tarpaulin material, just like stuff you'd cover your car in the winter with, you know. And and they had little booths there, and I went in to have my lap dance, and you're basically sitting in like a school chair, just like a plastic molded seat with like the thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting there. The girl gets on and straddles me in the on the lap dance, and my fucking the legs of the chair sink into the dirt because it's <laughs> it's England, it's been wet, and I'm getting lower and lower. I said, "Oh, right, well, hang on a bit, just get off me for a second. I propped it up and tried to you know get more tension on the legs. <laughs> Fun. Anyway, I probably had about three lap dances or something. It was just something else to fill the day, and I couldn't go back out and see the legless bikers. They were all angry with me, so I, I tried to stay in the tent as long as possible. <laughs> well, that's another tent show. <laughs> tent show, yes, yeah. indeed. The Stiffies. Um, all right. So The Stiffies, what a name for a band. Why, are they, why hasn't anyone called, been called the Stiffies? There might be. I don't know the answer for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so yeah. how'd the circus travel from town to town? Jim said trains. There's always a giraffe. I get it. I get out. a point. Why is there always a giraffe? A what? A giraffe? Oh, so that's something that comes a lot later. But you're on to something there because a lot of shows would. I mean, so this is more of an 1890s thing with mm. giraffes. Um, and they oftentimes they they were hard to keep in captivity, but um, sometimes they yeah they would always be part of the advertising, but sometimes they would not be seen all that well. So as far as you know being available on display, and so giraffes you know big, anticipating jumbo a little bit too, um, but because you could build a car so that the the head sticks out, you yeah, know, yeah, as yeah. an extra special thing. So it was all, you know, just part of spectacle. Oh, so they were drive sticking out. That wasn't just a thing we saw in movies. That it did happen. They did have that. Mm. Now on the train, it would be pretty, pretty tough. I mean, couldn't travel very fast with that kind of action, but mostly they would be not sticking their heads out. But it- that was something that on the wagons, especially, they would design them so that when they're parading, they could stick. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, River Phoenix goes and he gets chased after get, the saving the cross that needs to be in a museum. Of course it does. You're right, Indiana. And he gets in the train, he goes through the carriages, and there's a carriage with a rhino that starts sticking his horn up through. Never seen a fucking rhino in the zoo. I'm just saying maybe Indiana Jones films are partially made up. And there was also, the, what was the deal with he falls in the carriage? It's fucking just, it's filled with snakes. I've never seen that many snakes in a fucking zoo. Also, then he gets fearful of snakes because he falls in the snakes. If anything, it would make you more confident of snakes because none of these snakes bit him and he got out. I would be like around snakes all day. So where's his fear of snakes coming from? What I'm trying to say is, was was that a real thing? <laughs> Well, okay, so late in the <laughs> 19th <Chris> century. <laughs> hey, you don't have to answer this, Janet, but you can of, if you want. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. It's not sorry. for us yeah, podcast, Janet. It's not for us podcast. Can answer it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, stop. And no, no, go ahead. Go ahead and answer it. <laughs> no, no, I was going to take it right back to the circus, but take it back to Indiana Jones. Okay. Indiana, were there lots of snakes? Were there ever a rhino? Is there yeah. a magic box that you can go into that collapses and then you run at the back of the train? Quick question. <laughs> I don't know about the magic box. No. no, I'm going to say no to the magic box, but I'm going to say yes to the snakes and yes to the rhino, because in the later 19th century, a lot of these circuses were basically taking um, part in the process of colonization and Africa and in Asia. And a lot of shows were importing animals that were part of these you know, imperial exercises and explorers who were cataloging different animals. Yeah, you probably would have had, what, snake charmers? Yeah, but not with 200 snakes. You just have his one snake that he'd bring in a basket. I don't know. No, my, yeah. my charmer. No, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. There so, would just be a single snake usually. And, and the thing is, snake charming was not a skilled job at the circus. So a lot of the show managers' wives would you know, step in and be snake charmers on the show. That's what they call me. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> I thought they called you a snake warmer. Anyway, so, so yeah. when they when they did when they did the shows and you got monkeys and you got horses and you got 
How many times, or is there any documented events of a monkey just running into the crowd and ripping someone's face off? Or something similar, a rhino going fucking someone up or something like that? Yeah, yeah. So elephants sometimes ran amok if they, you know, they sometimes would be suffering from illnesses or just psychologically had had enough of it. Mm. And they would literally charge away trample a keeper mm. and in the words of a circus um you know a newspaper take possession of a town and so in these instances um it could be really it could be very dangerous and most of all for the elephant quite honestly because oftentimes it. these events led to their death and that, that what i'm learning is the the portrayal of circuses and movies is accurate Cause that always happens in the movies too. An elephant runs in the town. They're like, we got a kid and it's taking over the town. I'm like, that's bullshit. But no, no, that's the, what's happening. The elephants yeah. go, go bananas. I, um, P.T. Barnum. What you want to ask? I him? thought, what was the thing where I said the, the tent burnt down? I reckon I'm right on that question. We're getting there. P.T. Barnum though. Jim said he's a great self promoter hype man. We haven't talked about him yet. So when does he come into play? This yeah. So P.T. Barnum is, I mean, you, you, I gave you, credit for that because you said he was a promoter. And the thing is, is that he, that is his greatest contribution to the whole business of circus is that he was incredible with advertising. He actually comes to the circus late in his career. Um, he starts out in the 1830s and has all sorts of kind of makes money off of hoaxes. Um, he actually so he's a real paradoxical guy. Like he's both a slave owner at one point in his life and later an abolitionist. Right. So in 1835, he actually purchases an elderly African-American woman named Joyce Heth. And he takes her on exhibition and he bills her as the 161 year old nursemaid of George Washington. Which Man, of course is complete how, how do you and enslave a hundred year old woman and still <laughs> still make her work like bloody hell? It's fucking I mean, never ending. It's horrible. Yeah. And she was she was probably around 80, which is still really, really oh, old. Back and then is the, really old. Yeah. Really old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And really horrifying. You know, I mean, just from all of you know, I any know kind all of 80 year olds are scary. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> um, but but anyway, so yeah, you know, we so smell the old. So, um, oh my gosh. Okay, no, so I'd she, like to apologize to all of our elderly listeners. <laughs> you can't download a podcast. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> my my dad delete, deleted all the apps on his phone because whenever he touches it, he does it like a, a push down button and he just holds it like that until it starts wobbling and then uh. goes press it again. I've deleted another app. <laughs> so P.T. Barnum, P.T. Barnum oh, had, had this one exhibit that, you know. Yeah. So, so the thing hap good? what happened then yeah. is that she was, she was, um, you know, his, she was enslaved for a whole year and she passed away. And so what does Barnum do? He stages an autopsy, like a spectacle autopsy. So it's just this kind of horrifying thing. And the autopsy, the doctors, you know, they say, well, she was probably 80 years old. She was not 161. You know, of course, everyone knew that, mm. but Har but Barnum would, you know, he profited from essentially, you know, hoaxes. And in 1841, he actually buys a museum, calls it the American Museum. And it becomes kind of this, and it's in New York City. And it becomes this place where he exhibits all sorts of people. He exhibits animals. He exhibits beluga whales in tanks down in the basement. Mm. I mean, it's just, it's kind of a wild thing. And he also um, stages plays. In 1847, he kind of receives the gospel of temperance and decides that's it. I'm not drinking anymore. And then there's temperance plays at the American Museum. And so, like, he's also putting huge banners on the sides of the building. He would say, like, you know, he would have all these little kind of uh, entrees into the building, like, this way to the egress. And so people would be like, wow, what's the egress? That's so cool. The rest and they would go through it. And you know what would happen? They would leave the building. And if they wanted to come back, they had to pay again. <laughs> 
So if he was alive like today, he would be president, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah he's a real piece <laughs> of shit. Also, yeah, you say he's a complex man. I haven't heard anything good about them. He, he ripped people off. He enslaved them. He had whales in his basement. He had plays. I assume all yeah. the plays had to involve having a whale as a backdrop. Whenever someone was writing the script, just make sure there's a whale in the backdrop. Oh, this is going to be difficult. This one's set in the desert. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. So the complexity comes a little later in his life when he becomes an abolitionist. He becomes a Lincoln Republican. He becomes a politician, actually. So mm. a lot of, of course, and I won't, you know, I won't bring it up to the present with this stuff. But, you know, there have been comparisons made, certainly in terms of um, mm. entertainers and politics. But he becomes a state representative. Um, and as a state representative in 1865, he makes a very passionate speech in support of the 13th Amendment and is part of the ratification process for the state of Connecticut. So he's like um, Darth Vader. He comes good at the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's kind of it. They didn't, have, they didn't have Twitter back then. Otherwise, they would have scrolled back. Uh-oh. Did you have a woman in a cage? <laughs> Like that was 161 years old. That was amazing. What are you yeah. talking about? She was angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If they had social media, PT Barnum was fucked. Yeah, it's yeah. like, hello, hey. Yeah, so no more slavery. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lincoln. Lincoln's right. a good guy. Did you cut up a woman? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've all made mistakes. Yeah. Did you have yeah. whales in your basement? <laughs> no, different PT Barnum. Yeah, Barnes. and a whole lot of other animals too. And he also, he's the person who really invents what we think of as the modern sideshow or freak show. Mm. So at the American Museum, that's where a lot of people are employed who are billed as freaks. Have I I told the story about the Jim Rose um, freak show thing? Oh. Okay. So so I was performing at the Edinburgh Festival and the Jim Rose freak show was on in the same room as me. They were the show before me. Right, <laughs> and so I was performing, there, and so they had like Mr. Lifto is a bloke who's got oh, all yeah, these piercings that. in his body. He can lift up, yes. lift up pounds and pounds of what weight from a hook in his penis. Mm. It's quite a, it's quite a show. Then Jim Rose yeah. comes out and he eats a bit of glass, like smashes a light bulb and he eats it. And he does people covered in tattoos, etc. Like and so I would hang out with the the freaks, but some of them were just people that Jim had met and just gone. Do you want to be in my show and I'll teach you how to do a few tricks. So there was a girl there. She was a bit of a hipster sort of girl from New York. And because my show was on straight after theirs, we had the same dressing room. So I would see them as as I was entering in and they'd finish their show and I'd chat to them a bit and then I'd go and do my show. And so I actually saw their show a couple of times because I sat in the audience and just just watched it. And and there was this girl who shoved uh, paint balloons up her anus and then she farted out a, uh, a a Jackson Pollocky type painting, and then she I think she put a pen in the other hole and she signed the painting. Anyway, I was in love, so <laughs> I, I would ch- I would chat to this girl after every show, and I was do it, trying my best. And then I I just thought she was so cute, and she, and she was all like sort of free with a body farting out paint and whatnot. I thought what a cool person, and uh, <laughs> and then I asked her out, and she was like. No. And then Jim Rose, Jim Rose said, man, she just thinks she's out of your league. I was like, she fucking farts paintings, man. <laughs> like, like, like my self-esteem was already pretty bad back in the day. And I'm like, the the paint farter thought I wasn't good enough, that I that I wasn't going anywhere with my career. Oh, well, where are you now, fart lady? <laughs> She's Banksy. <laughs> yeah, she's Banksy. <laughs> Jack, crushing the day, Jack. You're crushing Thank you for us. Um, oh but the, the Jim Rose Circus, that's like the modern days. So There's Mr. Lift, though. Uh, yeah. What was the other one? But have you ever seen, uh, this is a circus act, have you ever seen Mr. Methane? No, I haven't. Oh, I've no. seen the Jim Rose oh, bloody, sideshow, but bloody I don't know Mr. Methane. Mr. Methane, he doesn't need a sideshow. He's got his own show. <laughs> bloody, Whoa. he's bloody good. He's a man who can fart on on thing. What he does is he lays on his back in a superhero outfit. He's a guy from Yorkshire, I believe, the north of England. And Perfect. he lays back and he pulls his leg back and he, and he farts and then he puts talcum powder. Uh, he has a, a dwarf, if I remember, comes out and sprays talcum powder <laughs> on the table and then he farts the talcum powder onto the door. 
Anyway, you've never seen a show like it. It's wonderful. And, and he's, he's tuned his farts so that he can play songs. And I think it was some Scandinavian country let him come into their parliament and fart their national anthem. Oh, wow. he's a hell of a show. Someone check if Mr. Methane's still gigging. And if he comes to town, I'm getting you all tickets. I feel like Luis is going to be doing this later with his brothers. <laughs> the circus sounds like jackass. There was sounds a, great. There was a guy at the uh, Adelaide French Festival, and his name was Prick Casso. And he painted with his dick naked. Okay. Yeah, it was not <laughs> hey, Mr. Mr. Methane was on uh, America's Got Talent. <laughs> yeah. Or Britain's Got Talent, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Is that right. what you said? Wait, no, he's been around for years. Uh, he would have he gone on the time. Well, Simon Cowell was not impressed the, with him. The problem with Mr. Methane is it, it's not a show you keep going to. <laughs> you, you see it once and you go, oh, I get what happens there. <laughs> but it bloody, it's a hell of a uh, fun. Jack, you'd love it. It sounds like it's right up your, It's right up your alleyway, Jack. <laughs> Okay, religion. <laughs> we talked about religion, and that was the when he put the tents outside the the town. Some of the we're, we we haven't gone through a lot of these questions. We're gonna have to go through them a little bit quicker, but we'll see. Not too quick. Uh, <laughs> how were women treated in the circus? Too well, if you ask me. Then Jim was kidding. Women weren't treated well because history. They're not treated well. So were they treated <laughs> badly crazy. in the circus? Well, that one was really more on the no side, um, surprisingly, because. Yeah. Um, so women were with circuses in America really right from the beginning. I mean, so John Bill Ricketts performs in 1793. The next year, he actually hires um, an American lady to perform in his circus as an equestrian. And women remain in the shows really subsequently. But the thing that happens is that with the Second Great Awakening, this kind of era of religious fervor in America, Protestant revival, camp meetings, and intense too, actually. This kind of, you know, religiosity leads to some places saying, no, we are not letting the circus come to town because there are women who are displaying their bodies for pay. And they're wearing scant costumes, and it's all about sex. And then there's people drinking all over the place. And then there's people doing whatever on the show lot and stealing and fighting and, you know, doing any number of things. And so they banned the circus. So women, interestingly, in this period, some shows said we have no women and they still did. Mm. You know, but they would advertise themselves that way just to, you know, appease local politicians and local religious leaders. But and so like Vermont and actually Connecticut home to P.T. Barnum, banned the circus in the antebellum era. So, and then there were little communities that did too. And women being part of the show was a huge part of that. And that, and was, so, that was the adult entertainment and they had to shift. That was the whole. Religion yeah. ruins everything. Yeah. The, the bearded ladies, <laughs> were, they, were they always real, real beards or they stuck them on? You know. They usually were pretty real. Right, yeah, right. like Annie Jones, she was she was legit. And the thing is, is that in marketing shows, the- Or was it just like know, the, Forrest and they put a fake bustier on him? <laughs> you got, you're bearded, you could be a bearded lady. Oh, 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 I didn't know you were talking about me. Yeah. They were talking about an actual forest. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> yeah. but, but I, I imagine if, if you're a woman and you're looking in the mirror and you're growing a beard, your first thought is, first, first thought is it, Oh, I could make a bit of money off this. <laughs> well, what, nowadays. What a, what a gift I've been given. <laughs> I don't think they made a lot of money, the bearded ladies. <laughs> oh, yeah, they were they were in Forbes top 100. <laughs> more, right. more rag, the bearded lady. All right, let's try and get through some questions. We're, we're lagging. We got we to pick it up. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. Jim, Jim, he, gets very, he gets very angry. Well, like, I want to get through all the questions. I'm otherwise, people say we don't you answer. Get we're going, you wasted talk. Uh, <laughs> 1859, Jules Leotard was the first to do this at the Cirque Napoleon in Paris. Jim said tightrope walker. Okay, so he said that, and I wrote a big fat no on the paper, but then he said trapeze. Oh. Yeah, it's all high with a net. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. First trapeze, Okay. And then yeah. what, what happened at Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus at Hartford, Connecticut on July 6, 1944? He said fire and they all died. <laughs> uh, you know what? OK, half credit on that one. There was a fire um, and it was really, really horrible. Um, 167, possibly 169 people died in that fire. There were 7000 people at the circus that day. Whoa. And. The show Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey had used a combination of paraffin dissolved in gasoline mm. 
to waterproof the tent. Oh, yeah. And so you can imagine how fireproof that was. I can't believe there weren't more fires at the circus. Yeah, back, back Gasoline in the, tents. No, back in the day when everyone was sitting on wooden benches, smoking cigarettes openly yeah. around bales of hay inside a cotton building. And it's not a fire. I can't believe a fire would even happen. You can't smoke on a bloody plane. That thing's never right. going to set a light, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. So. And fire was pretty common, so I will just add to that. That's and what then drove- imagine when the fire came out, there was like a dinky little fire truck came out and 17 clowns <laughs> fell out of it, squirting water in their faces. Just, just- from their flowers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so very fast, what happened with Hartford was once they saw, once the circus people saw the flames starting in a corner, Merle Evans, who was the band leader, he immediately began playing Stars and Stripes Forever, which is a danger song. This is John Philip Sousa. And when that tune gets started, na, 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 that means get the hell out of there. Really? I, I, I imagine, I the I imagine small yeah. people <laughs> dancing. <laughs> <laughs> no. And the problem was, okay, so the Walenda family, the high wire walkers, they were working at that time. But the previous act, which was a so-called cage act with big cats, they had the entrances blocked off because they hadn't cleared them from that particular act previously. So people stacked up. The circus set into motion and everyone helped, you know, people get out. But it was a, you know, it was really rough. And a, several circus employees were actually um, tried. And then one, you know, some people spent some time in prison for negligence. Wait, wait, I mean, I, I've performed in front of 7,000 people before. That's a lot of people. How big was this tent? Like even in the round, that's a, that's a shit ton of people. It is a shit ton of people. And yeah. the tent was pretty big, but, you know, it was not. I mean, it's amazing. So in my kind of my opinion about all of this, I mean, it's a horror what happened. But at the same time, I am amazed that people, most people were able to get out. So Jumbo the Clown, why was he called Jumbo if he wasn't big? And what was he allowed to drink? Oh, he was a clown. Of- I thought he was an elephant. Yeah, was an uh, elephant. Jum- Jumbo the Elephant. Sorry. Oh, God. Jumbo the clown elephant. changes everything. Sorry. <laughs> Jumbo the Elephant. <laughs> uh, he wasn't big, but his name was Jumbo. Why is that? And then what was he allowed to drink one to two gallons of once in a while? Yeah. So I have to confess that my audio cut out for a moment. So oh. I did not I, hear- I said whatever you're about to say. Now, jum- <laughs> okay. Jumbo. Why was he called Jumbo if he wasn't big? And what okay. did he drink? So he was small. He was on the small side when he was captured in Abyssinia. And he grew to be a very big, big elephant. Um, he was r- around 10 feet tall, which is really huge. Um, Barnum claimed that he was 12 feet tall but he really was a little smaller than that. But what he drank, Matthew Scott was his keeper and they had a very close bond. Um, and Scott would give him whiskey. Oh, that's two gallons just, of whiskey. Two yeah. gallons of whiskey. Yeah, but if you yeah. want to. We remember so that we can, alcohol episode. That's how much people were drinking in yeah, a day back true. then. That's true. That's true. Oh my gosh. So, yes. so he was called Jumbo when he was small, but that meant something else in... And, yeah. and then, so when he got big, then his name was Jumbo. But now that's why we think the word Jumbo means big because of this elephant. Oh, that's where the word Jumbo yeah. came from. Yeah, yeah, it totally oh. is. Yeah. I hear, that, I hear that Shamu the whale when it was small was called Shema- Shemiel. <laughs> Shemir? It comes, it comes from the Swahili word Jumbe. His moo is- yeah. Uh, yeah. Jumbe, which means chief. I don't know. Uh, so the reason yeah. we think Jumbo means big is because of this elephant. Yep. Ah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I would have thought and the same thing you said. Yeah, he's big. So yeah, yeah. big. He's big. Jumbo. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah makes perfect sense. Jumbo. But that's yeah. that's that's right. And and when he came to the United States from the London um, Zoological Garden, where he had been kept for a long time, it was a huge sensation. I mean, there were people lining New York City and the harbor to see him as he got off this ship. You right. know, after a long voyage. Get the telly, um, man. Fucking hell. They, well, were they didn't have it yet. I hear there's a big <laughs> elephant coming. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I'm well, going to get drunk on whiskey and stand on the shore. <laughs> no. Well, you know, so that's the thing. Like, and to see the elephant is kind of a lexicon. You know, it's a phrase in American language about that awe of seeing an elephant for the first time. And it became a synonym for going into battle. Then why did no and one want to talk about him when they're in the room? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Did you like it. that one for us? Thanks for being here, Janet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. I thought that was a solid joke. You're all not fucking giving me the love I deserve. That <laughs> was a great joke. I was just being funny. I was trying to, you know, make entertainment. So. <laughs> Don't talk what about is it. a funambu- funambulist? Jim uh, said you overdose on drugs and on the way to the well, hospital, you're feeling better. A funambulist <laughs> is a tightrope walker. Uh, 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 it's not that fun, is it? <laughs> Yeah, right. When you watch him, after you've seen it for a bit, you're like, mm, it's all right. Get rid of the pole, and then you got my attention. What pole? You know when they hold the, the pole to balance? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you think that's not a big deal? You can do it? Uh, the, guy, the, the guy who did it between the Twin Towers, he was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, in that documentary, he mm-hmm. was pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good? Yeah. He was that well in there? Oh, he was he was better at it than me. No, no, it was a French. It was a oh, French okay. wire walker. Yeah. yeah, and then afterwards he goes, and then I met the woman, and we made love, and uh, I had done uh, pleasures of the flesh after pleasure of the soul. After like <laughs> bloody French people. <laughs> when was Ringling Brothers Circus created, and how many of the brothers were included in the creation? Jim said three brothers in the twenties. So the Ringling Brothers. They created their circus in 1884, and there were five of them. There were seven brothers total and then a sister, but five were involved in the creation of their show. Like the Jacksons. Yeah, very much like that. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Adult entertainment, we talked about that. Who is responsible for the greatest show on earth tagline? Jim said P.T. Barnum. He's got it. That's your point. That's one of your points right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and Clown College, he said it started in the 50s. Um, people came back from war. I don't know why he said that. Because they needed cheering up. The oh, Second yeah, World yeah. War had just yeah. ended and people needed a laugh. Yeah. Wrong? Yeah. So 1968 was when Clown College was created. What, what was the first clown? Was it an accident? Was it just like a person who just did their makeup really shitty and had lost a lot of weight so their clothes looked ill fitting? <laughs> <laughs> had their dad shoes their kids. Yeah. <laughs> well so clowning is tied to the history of you know court gestures oh, and yeah, them with this pantomime yeah. and all that so yeah you know they've been around for a long time and one of the places that they did a lot of work and actually a lot of circus performers who joined the shows back in the very very early modern europe era they would work at these seasonal fairs So there'd be like feast days and fairs. And as the fairs started closing down, well, they were kind of without work. And so once Philip Astley opens his his circus, basically, um, in 1768 onward, that's where a lot of these folks start getting jobs. Me and Forrest really, really are modern day court jesters. That's what we do for a living. I I often think about this, but I have thought about this. If I was back in the day, I don't know if I would have been a good cook. I know Forrest wouldn't have been too low key. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest, Forrest would come out and like the. No, but I'm fat. You just throw stuff at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's one of those. Yeah, skills. you would have been a good guy in a uh, duck tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you would have come out, the king's unhappy. Yeah. Uh, He's like, no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> turkey legs, am I right? <laughs> Tell the king, join the club. <laughs> Yeah, uh, okay. Um, what toy company bought the circus in 1971? Jim said Mattel. Correct. Yeah. Nice. Oh, you got That's another point. Guess. All right. Yeah. And then here near the end, we're talking about this is what did Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey eliminate from their show starting in 2016? Jim said, aren't the Germans fun people song? <laughs> <laughs> did it affect ticket sales? Yes, a lot of Germans support. <laughs> Was it 2016? Yeah, yeah. I said two, Oh, I, said I thought like, you were saying 1916. No, I said 2016. Oh, I changed my answer. Times. Animals, animals. I got rid of animals. All the animals? Yeah. What happened in 2016? Well, okay. What you just said is very close to the mark. They got rid of their elephants. Yeah. They yeah. retired all the elephants. Did and they retire them? Or did they? Well, okay. So what they, they did. Send them off to a they, paddock where they can run around happy with other elephants. They went to go buy so cigarettes. there was a very nice facility <laughs> down in Florida where they kept them. Called Joe then, Exotic Zoo. No, no, it's, it's, it's the other one. What's her uh, name? Oh, who's the That's other one? That's she was in Florida. Uh, ha- um, oh, right. Carol, Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin. Carol, Baskin. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. Carol Baskin. She's got yeah. all the elephants. <laughs> well, so they went to this place that was owned by the circus. And then once 
the Feld family decided to shut down the circus in you know 2017. Then they dissolved it and sold all the elephants. Do you consider so, Cirque du Soleil to be a circus? Because that's not always yeah. in, that's not always in the circle though. Like some of the love show is, but the other ones are on a stage and all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally do. I mean, I'm very, I'm pretty ecumenical about what a circus is because I think that like if there's stage show elements and it's a multi-act show, I'm fine calling it a circus. Mm. And I think Cirque du Soleil is definitely a circus. What's yeah. the greatest circus you've ever seen? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, probably, I mean, for sheer skill, I would have to say that some of those Cirque performers are pretty amazing. They're amazing. Yeah. They're amazing. And you know yeah. what? Whenever I look at Cirque du Soleil and they're all swinging around, they're holding onto each other, let's be honest, they're all athletes. They're all ex uh, Russian yeah. gymnasts and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. They're all young. They're all, yes. they're all fucking each other. At one stage or another, they're all fucking each other. <laughs> and then you're responsible for not dropping this person. <laughs> like like she's, she's off fucking that acrobat. She was your girlfriend a week ago and you're like, I could, oh, you know, it just seems like, of course there's going to yeah. be an, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll catch you, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I think. I think that why don't, that person might hate that person. That person yeah. might, you know, it seems very, or you might get moved to a different show. You might think, oh, I'm in a good show here. This show will never end. The Michael Jackson Cirque du Soleil <laughs> show. And then finally <laughs> leaving Netherland comes on. You're like, oh, God, I'll try to get over that Beatles love thing. <laughs> Till we find out what Paul McCartney really did. <gasps> if you were in the circus today, what would your uh, what would your act be? I'd be that guy at Cirque du Soleil who goes around and bothers people as they're trying to get in their seats. <laughs> you know that? You know <laughs> that? Uh, the 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 gravity sort of comes in. And he goes, and then he just gets a bit of confetti and chucks it in someone's face, <laughs> and then he just walks off like a drunk. For I'd it? do that anyway. Forrest, what would your act be? Um, a uh, uh, tight wire. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. I'd like, Good I'd balance. like to see him swinging around and everything. A human <laughs> An wrecking ball. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to pay a lot of money. <laughs> it it's Vegas. Yeah, like he's, he's only doing one show and then it's over. <laughs> Here comes the wrecking ball, and they stack up like a lot of cardboard boxes and forest bashes through them. And they go, let's see <laughs> if you can do, do that, tires. Yeah. Bang. <laughs> I would do that if I had like a suit too. I'd do it. Yeah. Oh, Dress yeah. as the Kool Aid Man. All right, let's let's write that up. <laughs> What would you do, Kelly? Uh, I don't. I can do the human pretzel. I'd just do that in the middle of the stage. The human pretzel, where you put your legs behind, like you can put them behind your head and uh, and connect them. Contortionist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what she calls. Is music? Is there music or something on that? No. Well, it's normally, just moaning. Normally Barry White's in the background. <laughs> yeah. um, I, Barry the, White, I went to saw him in concert. But he, you know, he's the Godfather. I love you. He was, he, he was sweating so fucking hard. <laughs> He came out and sat in a stool the whole time and then like, let's talk about making love. But I was like, fuck it, hell, dude. You'll be lucky to make it off the stage. <laughs> did uh, eliminating elephants from the circus affect the ticket sales, though? It did. You know, so the thing is, there still was a very sizable contingent of circus fans who wanted them there. So it definitely really? did. In modern yeah. day. To this day, there's people who are like, I'm not going anymore. They don't have the elephants. Oh, I was much better back in the day. They used to whip the elephants in the, and the kids would scream with joy. Wonderful. Why is it that accent? Yeah. Uh, because whenever I talk about miserable people, I do Northern England. <laughs> I, 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 do, I do that with my son now. I just go like this. I, I go, uh, I always talk to him in a Northern accent like he's meant to be, like he's five months old. So I always go, Charlie, it's your father. By your age, I was working down mine, not sitting around here dribbling myself like you. I was contributing. <laughs> My wife hates when I do that because she goes, oh, he'll, he'll, that'll seep into him. Don't listen to your mother. She's never loved you. She's never loved anything but herself. You know, I do that all day. He's just a bastard character I do in the house, but I hide it with this accent so it's not me. It's cute when you do <laughs> Well, now this is a part of our show called Dinner Party Facts. We ask our expert to give us a fact that's obscure, interesting, that our listeners or viewers can use to impress people at a dinner party or a bar or wherever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Forrest hasn't been invited to a dinner party in a while. And he's feeling a bit bad. Or a bar or whatever. Or someone can just say care. it to you over the phone. I'm fine. I can read it on the internet by myself. Yeah. I don't need anybody. I've got a single TV dinner. <laughs> Green Chef. <laughs> All right, go. What do you got, Janet? 
Okay. I really struggled with this one because I have so many little factoids that I love so much. However, I'm going to say that Tinkerbell at Disneyland, she was a burlesque dancer as a live performer. This is Tiny Klein. She hung by her teeth at the circus, but before that, she worked in burlesque joints. And when she was 70 years old, she became Disneyland's first Tinkerbell. And she would climb the Matterhorn every night, suit up and zip line across Disneyland and alight Sleeping Beauty's castle. She'd wave her little hand. Wait, and wait a minute, because they, they, they have a little they have a little animated Tinkerbell now that goes over the castle and they're yeah. in the fireworks show. They had a real person. Um, quick, quick, quick question. <laughs> Did Disney ask her to do this? <laughs> or is she just an old lady with dementia who used to go out there? And I'm just... a fairy. <laughs> She has a bit of, there you go, kid. She has a bit of fun. She, she's been on that cable for you. We think she's been dead for four years. She just goes back and forth, back and forth. Little bear. Yeah. Yeah. I always, I always fancied yeah. out of all the di- – Tinkerbell's my favourite. She's only little, you know. Yeah. Got wings. Yeah. Just anything that makes my cock look bigger. <laughs> So that so they modeled it. So the Tinkerbell today is modeled after that same woman, though. Like I guess when she was younger, not seventy. Or well, I mean, so there was um, a character in the J.M. Barry, um, you know, in the in the story originally about little tiny Tinkerbell. Mm. But um, so oh, I see. The thing yeah. is, though, is that the you know the the icon that you see on TV when you see that blur of light going over the castle, that's what was going on. Oh, so wow. that's where you see this 70. 70 year old burlesque <laughs> dancer person who hangs by her teeth. That's her. So why, this was the same one that they... went, went across Times Square, right? So, yeah, yes. she sent me a video of her hanging from her teeth across a, a wire across Times Square. But dental plans back then weren't that good, especially no. with the elderly. Most people had fucking dentures. <laughs> I just don't get how, like, she must have brushed good. <laughs> she, always floss. Yeah, always no floss. Candies. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is. But it's like Walt Disney when he went. Oh, maybe younger girls went. Hey, I could do the Tinkerbell job. So he goes, Nah, I got a bird who can do it. <laughs> she, she, she's good. She's she'll be good for another thirty years. I mean. <laughs> we won't be needing one of them for a while. Yeah. So I've I got I, another eighty-year-old bird lined up for Orlando. <laughs> Um, so that is one of your books. I, I didn't even know that when I read, read it, Tiny Klein, Circus Queen, and Tinkerbell, the mem- memoir yeah. of Tiny Klein, uh, the circus age, culture, and society under the American Big Top, and the gospel of kindness, animal welfare, and the making of modern America. Those are all available, like we said, on Amazon. Janet Davis is the author, and she's our guest. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for being Thank on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was so much fun. I really appreciate it. Ladies, so. ladies and gentlemen, if if you if you're ever at a party and someone walks up to you and goes, you know, Tinkerbell was in her sixties, going, I don't know about that. <laughs> Walk away. <laughs> Good night, Australia.